I have been here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. My alliance with Barbara Faversham seems to be paying dividends. We practically eliminated Sir Thomas Bradbury. At any rate, he's ruined. And deservedly so, in that he was instrumental in getting Barbara's father a jail sentence. <laughs> By the way, that convenient arrangement between Barbara's flat and my own, namely a hinged bookcase, makes quick exits and communication easy. <laughs> now, this particular morning we have a call to make in Farrington Market, just off Hoban Viaduct. A remarkable place, this. You can buy anything from candlesticks to lawnmowers, even handcuffs. Hank, oh, perish the thought. What a wonderful place, Rowley. True, and every hundred yards of Harrington Market has its quota of thieves, pickpockets, and tricksters. But never mind the market anymore. We turn down the street. Now, hey, hey, what's all the hubbub? There's a man running towards us. Oh, Rowley, look, he's got an old clock in his arms. By Jovi, yes. Stop, thief! Stop he's stolen thief. it. Listen. By all means, stop him. Get out of my way. Not so, my friend. <coughs> Brought him down like a bird. Now, what's it all about? <laughs> Oh, thank you indeed, sir. I uh, valued that clock. It's an old Dutch timepiece, uh, uh, possibly the only asset I have of any value. So it's yours, eh? But how did that bird get hold of it? Indeed, sir, yes, it is mine. And how he got hold of it is fairly obvious, if you'll do me the honour of walking 20 or 30 yards. Well done, sir. You brought him down like a trimmer. I reckon I'll take charge of him now. Good. Thanks, Constable. But what is all that to do? Well, sir, you'll know all about it if you'll follow the old gentleman, as he said. His name's Crewe. Raphael Crewe. An odd luck case, if ever there was one. There, sir, there is the beginning of the trouble. But what is all this? These bits of furniture on the pavement? Eviction, miss. Old man Crewe's been turned out. I was ordered to stand by as protection. But that son of Satan, Slimy Joe, got behind me and half inch the clock and scarp it. Well, under the circumstances, I am very glad I connected. Slimy Joe ain't so pleased, though. Still dazed. Oh, I reckon that was a rare one you give him. The constable has told you, sir, of my predicament. Uh, a matter of rent, you understand. It has been an unfortunate time for my wife and myself. The old lady's in hospital, sir. Do something, Rowley. He's a dear old man. We'll see. He's as honest as the day, sir. A real gent, as the saying is, but struck some bad luck, and what with the old lady's illness beside, he's flat broke. So you see the result? Everything he's got's out in the pavement. Don't fumble, Rowley. Do something. All right, my dear, but don't be impatient. Uh, Mr. Crewe, how much do you owe? That, sir, is entirely my business. You have already obliged me in the matter of the clock, and I am grateful. Shall we leave it at that? But we wish to help. Look, all your belongings on the pavement. What's to happen to them? That again, miss, is my business. I, though seemingly struggling in a rough sea, will keep myself afloat, as it were. There are always kind friends. Why who... shouldn't I be one of them? I, I really would like to help. Uh, just alone, if you like. Would uh, 20 pounds help? It's all I've got in my purse. Madam, it would more than help. It would completely extricate me from the very embarrassing situation in which I find myself. Indeed, I thank you. Well, there we are. Well, darling, having distributed largesse and so forth, are you ready to come along? Certainly. Goodbye, Mr. Crewe. Goodbye, miss. And may God reward you for your kindness to an old unfortunate. Well, now, to the business in hand. Little Charlie Austin lives around here. Austin? Austin, and he doesn't make cars. By heavens, I'm almost advertising. Barbara, promise me one thing, one very serious thing. But what can it be? Never, never advertise. Now, here's Charlie's little shop. Enter, madame. And what can I do for you? Oh, blow me if it ain't... No names, Charlie, no pack drill. 
Are they ready? The necklace is all correct, sir. As beautiful a set of uh, diamonds as ever you did see. Diamonds? A figure of speech, Barbara. Charlie is an expert. What you see are worth more than diamonds, rubies and pearls. They are the oyster openers to the treasure houses of the world. Commonly called by novelists, crime reporters and other romancers, skeleton keys. I ain't a better set in the kingdom, so help me. True. Thank you, Charlie. And here's the money. Thank you, Mr... Hex, eh? Hex is good, Charlie. <laughs> See you later. Come, Barbara. Now for home. Wait. Dodge into this doorway with me, quickly. But... Quiet. Do you see what I see? What do you see? I see my old friend Ebenezer Ford, Chief Inspector Ford, standing across the road. Why shouldn't he? More to the point, why should he? He's watching Charlie's place. Do you think he saw us come out? Afraid he did. Don't talk, just watch. Yes, as he's going to Charlie's place. I don't underestimate friend Ford a wee bit. Come along, Farrington Market is no place for you and me. It's home and quickly. Why, if it ain't the inspector himself. Morning, Charlie. Behaving yourself? Why, Inspector Ford. All right, all right. As long as you're on the side of law and order, we won't drag up old sores. How's burglary these days? Mr. Ford. All right, cut the innocence. I know, we all know you're as white as the driven snow when it's been down two weeks. What was that swell doing in your shop just now? Who is he? What is he? What did he want? Oh, you're confusing me, Inspector. Listen, Charlie, you're out of stir for a time. Behave and you'll keep out. You're the best locksmith and key wangler outside of Dartmoor. Your customers aren't bank managers and safe deposit curators. Now, what did you sell that customer? Quick! Just a bunch of... Uh, he, uh... He what? He had trouble with his safe at home. Trouble? Uh, lost the key, he said. So you supplied him with a bunch good enough to open the Bank of England. Uh, he didn't mean no harm, Inspector. He's a respectable gent, he is. Oh, he is, eh? Mm, I, uh, I don't know his name. Well, don't you worry. I do. All right, Charlie. Mind you keep your nose a bit cleaner before I pay you another visit. There's still room in Dartmoor for accomplices and fences. I'll see you later. Do you think we got away before that inspector saw us? No, I don't think so. At the same time, he couldn't pin anything on us, provided Charlie Austin did his bit. But isn't Ford the inspector, the one who pieced the bits together and formulated his Grey Goose Robin Hood theory? That's the man. My old schoolmate at Eton, now turned policeman. Do give up this grey feather conceit of yours. <laughs> Not in your life. I'm just looking forward to presenting him with one. Hello? The warning buzzer. Someone coming along the passage. Press the bottom of the bookcase, Barbara, and the moves. You mustn't be found in my flat. Right. I'm off. Coming! Hello, Roland. Well, if it isn't my Etonian sleuth, come in, Ben. Thank you. Drink? Cigarette? No, no, neither thanks. I'm on duty. Duty? Come, come. What have I done to exercise your duty consciousness? Nothing that I can pinpoint, Fletcher. But didn't I see you in Farrington Street Market today? Oh, yes, I was in the market. And if you were there, you probably saw me, but I didn't notice you. What were you selling? What were you buying, Fletcher? I? Uh... Some keys at Charlie Austin. Oh, uh, keys. Why, well, yes, Charlie Austin. Oh, is that a chap? You see, Ben, I'm actually Fletcher of the Fletcher Lock and Safe Co. Ever heard of me? Oh, why, of course. Well, though a cadet of the firm, I've invented quite a number of our specials. I'm always experimenting, and so I use all the burglar's stock in trade. Charlie Austin is one of the most expert cracksmen in the city. Really? A pal told me he was the chap to help me. Hmm. Were your keys any good? My word, yes. For the first time in months, I managed to open my own safe without a key. Gave me a whole kit of keys, too. Skeletons, I suppose. Is that what you all are? Yes, that's what I and the police and the crooks call them. Good. I'll call them ditto. Fletcher, just let's stop fencing, shall we? Fencing, Ben? Yes, fencing. What do you require a set of skeleton keys for? Why, I've told you, Ben. And that's honest. And <laughs> you wouldn't experiment on any other lock, would you? Oh, really, Ben? Aren't you being a bit absurd? All right, forget it. But you can't stop me wondering a bit. Wondering? Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, let's have a drink. Yes, very well, I will. Whiskey and soda, if you please. Cigarette? No, no, no. I'll smoke my pipe, eh? 
You know, Fletcher, I, I was rather interested in your other activities in the market today. Oh? Yes, you, you were taken for a real ride. Was I? Old man crew, Raphael. The victim of the ejection order? The same. <laughs> well, how was I taken for a ride? Oh, very old confidence trick. You gave him 20 pounds, didn't you? Well, my lady friend did. <laughs> the furniture on the pavement, the dignity of the old man. Go on. Even the policeman, phony right throughout. My hat, you don't say... Oh, dear. Got a pipe cleaner. My pipe stuck up, I think. So that dear old man crew was a confidence trickster. <laughs> yes, Fletcher. Does the same trick every week. You've got that pipe cleaner. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Here you are. A feather. I would. How I laugh when I saw you so beautifully taken in. <laughs> oh, well, that's better. <coughs> Pipe's going now. Oh, that refers to me. I must be off too. Well, thanks for the call, Ben. Cheerio. <laughs> See you in jail. Here's your hat. Watch your hurry, as they say today. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Fletcher. Good night, Ben. <laughs> I'll still be laughing at your takedown at Paddington Market. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> is that my hat? There it is. Damn me, I didn't have a feather in it. How did it? It's a grey feather. A grey goose feather. Listen again to the adventures of Roland Fletcher, alias the Grey Goose. The story of a modern Robin Hood.